G'day and welcome back to Unimig. Today we're going to run you through the entire setup guide for the Unimig Viper 185, covering MIG, TIG, stick and spool gun. The timestamps for each will be left in the description. We will now start with the setup guide for gas and gasless MIG welding using the Viper 185. First of all, let's plug our machine into our 10 amp power point and organise our suitable PPE. Step 1, polarity. We are going to start off with gas shielded MIG welding, so our earth lead goes into the negative panel mount socket, while the polarity cable goes into the positive panel mount socket, and our torch into the Euro connection, which makes our setup DC electrode positive. Step 2, gas connection. It's now time to connect our gas hose to the gas inlet on the back of our machine and crimping it tight using a hose clamp. Also insert the regulator tail into the other end of the gas hose and crimp using a hose clamp. This is the regulator we're using. Now we connect our argon regulator to our gas bottle and tighten using a spanner. This is an argon CO2 mixture, ideal for MIG welding mild steel. Next step is to attach the other end of the gas hose to the regulator and tighten once again with a spanner. Step 3. Rollers. We need a V-groove roller for solid wire. Since we're using a 0.8 wire, we'll need a 0.8 roller. To change a roller, unscrew the retaining cap, take off existing roller, replace with V-groove roller, and screw back the retaining cap. Step four, installing the wire. First, we need to remove the spool retaining nut this machine will take a 1 kilo spool or a 5 kilo spool. We'll be demonstrating how to do both, but we'll start with a 5 kilo spool. Mount the spool onto the spool holder, making sure the location holes match the spool locator. Then replace the nut and tighten. For 1 kilo spools, remove the 5 kilo spool adapter. Slide on the 1 kilo spool and reattach the nut and spring. Feed the wire through the inlet guide on top of the roller and into the guide tube. Secure the top arm with the tensioner and tighten just enough so the wire feeds through. Step 5. Feeding the wire. Remove the front end torch consumables so the wire feeds through smoothly and feed the wire using the inch button. Replace your tip and shroud on the front end of the torch, not to forget to cut the excess wire sticking out. Step 6, MIG welding. The next step is to set your burn back. Burn back dictates how far your wire will stick out once you finish your weld. I recommend setting it halfway. Also set your spool gun slash standard MIG switch to standard and the selector switch on the front panel to MIG. There is a general guide on the inside of the machine on setting up your amps and voltage, depending on the thickness of metal to be welded. Now that you have set your parameters, it's time to turn your gas on to around 10 to 12 litres per minute and attach the earth clamp to your workpiece. You're now ready to weld. Now let's set up the Viper 185 for gasless MIG welding. Step one, polarity. Starting off, our earth lead will go into the positive panel mount socket while the polarity cable goes into the negative panel mount socket and the torch into the Euro connection which makes our setup DC electrode negative. Step 2. Rollers. We'll need an F-groove roller for gasless wire. Since we're using 0.8 wire, we'll need a 0.8 roller. To change roller, unscrew the retaining cap, take off the existing roller replace with the F-groove roller and screw back retaining cap. Step 3. Installing the wire. First we need to remove the spool retaining nut. This machine will take 1 kilo spool or a 5 kilo spool. We'll be demonstrating how to do both but we'll start with a 5 kilo spool. Mount the spool onto the spool holder making sure the location holes match the spool locator then replace the nut and tighten. 
for one kilo spools, remove the five kilo spool adapter, slide on one kilo spool and reattach nut in the spring. Feed the wire through the inlet guide on top of the roller and into the guide tube. Secure the top arm with the tensioner and tighten just enough so the wire feeds through. Step four, feeding the wire. Make sure you have removed the front end torch consumables so the wire feeds through smoothly and feed the wire using the inch button. Replace your tip and shroud on the front end of the torch, not forgetting to cut off the excess wire sticking out. Step five, MIG welding. Now it's time to set your burn back. The burn back dictates how far your wire will stick out once you finish your weld. We recommend setting it halfway. Also set your spool gun slash standard MIG switch to standard and the selector switch on the front panel to MIG. There is a general guide on the inside of the machine on setting up your amps and voltage, depending on the thickness of metal to be welded. Once you've set your amps and volts, it's time to attach your earth clamp to your workpiece and you're ready to weld. We will now move on to the setup guide for TIG welding using the Viper 185. First of all, let's plug our machine into our 10 amp power point and organise a suitable PPE. Step one, polarity. To start, we need to connect our TIG torch into our negative panel mount socket and our earth clamp into the positive panel mount socket. This makes our setup DC electrode negative. Step two, gas connection. This is the flow meter we're using. Now we're going to connect our flow meter regulator to our gas bottle and tighten using a spanner. This is pure argon gas, ideal for TIG welding. The next step is to attach the other end of the gas hose to the regulator and tighten once again with a spanner. Step three, basic setup. Firstly, make sure your selector switch on the front panel is switched to TIG. Amps will be your only controllable parameter on this process. We'll be welding 5mm mild steel, so we'll be turning it to 110 amps. Step 4. Torch setup. We will be using the 17V 4M CP50 Lift Arc T-Torch with these consumables. To attach these consumables, firstly screw in the collar body, Screw the gas shroud. Slide in the collet, followed by the tungsten electrode. And finally, screw on the back cap to lock it all into place. Step five, tungsten electrodes. There are three commonly used electrodes for this process. The purple T3, the grey tip seriated and the gold tip lanthanated. We will be using the gold tip lanthanated as it's more versatile and has better arc characteristics. Also, make sure your tungsten is sharpened to a point using a bench grinder. Step 6. TIG welding. Now that you have set your parameters, it's time to turn your gas on to around 8 to 10 litres per minute and attach your earth clamp to your workpiece. You are now ready to weld. Making sure to turn the gas valve clockwise on the torch to initiate the gas prior to striking the arc. And again, turning it off when finished welding. We will now move on to the setup guide for stick welding using the Viper 185. First of all, let's plug our machine into our 10 amp power point and organise our suitable PPE. Step one, polarity. Firstly, we need to connect our earth clamp into our negative panel mount socket and our electrode holder into our positive panel mount socket. Also, on the front panel, turning our selector switch to MMA. 
Step two, electrodes. Flux covered electrodes come in many different types and sizes for welding different materials and different thicknesses. The three main electrode sizes would be 2.5 millimeter, which we would recommend between 90 and 100 amps, 3.2 millimeter, which we would recommend between 115 and 135 amps, and 4 millimeter, which we would recommend between 140 and 160 amps. Now, to secure the electrode, insert the desired electrode into the head of the torch and tighten by twisting the head clockwise, making sure it secures. Step three, stick welding. Once you've set your amps and attached your earth clamp to your workpiece, it's time to weld, making sure you strike your electrode on your workpiece and drag along the joint. We will now move on to the setup guide for spool gun using the Viper 185. First of all, let's plug our machine into our 10 amp power point and organise the suitable PPE. Step 1, polarity. Starting off, our earth clamp goes into the negative panel mount socket, while our spool gun goes into our Euro connection. Next, the polarity cable goes into the positive panel mount socket and the 9-pin plug goes into the 9-pin plug socket. This makes our setup DC electrode positive. As well as this, make sure you set your spool gun slash standard MIG switch to spool gun and the selector switch on the front panel to MIG. Step 2 gas connection. It's now time to connect our gas hose to the gas inlet on the back of our machine and crimping it tight using a hose clamp. Also insert the regulator tail into the other end of the gas hose and crimp using a hose clamp. This is the regulator we're using. Now we connect our argon regulator to our gas bottle and tighten using a spanner. This is pure argon gas ideal for MIG welding aluminium. The next step is to attach the other end of the gas hose to the regulator and tighten once again with a spanner. Step 3, torch setup. We will be using the PLSP 240A spool gun for this setup. Part 1, rollers. To access the roller, flip open the protective cover, untighten the tensioner screw and snap back the tensioner arm. To change a roller, insert the supplied spanner underneath the roller and tighten the retaining nut, taking off the roller. To replace, simply insert the desired roller onto the spindle, replace retaining nut and tighten. Part 2. Attach first consumables. Firstly, put on the gas distributor, screw on the tip holder, tightening it with MIG pliers. Part 3 installing the wire. To install the wire, unscrew the housing cover and pull back the brake. Feed around 30 millimeters of wire into the inlet tube and place a spool of wire onto the spindle, releasing the brake onto the wire to ensure the wire does not unravel. Make sure your wire feeds through the inlet on top of the roller and into the following guide tube. Next, clamp the tensioner arm closed and tighten the tensioner to apply just enough pressure so the wire will feed through. Part 4. Feeding the wire. To feed the wire, pull the trigger on the spool gun until the wire comes out of the swan neck, not forgetting to replace the housing cover and screw tight. Part 5. Attach final consumables. The next step is to screw on the contact tip tightening it with MIG pliers. Followed by pushing on the gas nozzle and cutting off the excess wire. Step four, spool gun welding. There are two controllable parameters on this process. We will be setting it up for welding eight millimeter aluminium. 
The Y speed control determines how much Y per minute will feed through your gun, while the voltage controls the amount of heat and penetration. These two parameters need to work in harmony to get a sufficient weld. Now that you have set your parameters, it's time to turn your gas on to around 10 to 12 litres per minute and attach the earth clamp to your workpiece. You're now ready to weld.